Hi Richard at Orange Campers and in this video we're going to talk about solar. Now solar is a bit of a minefield and it's a lot to take in and it's a lot, I can't even explain most of it in one video anyway. But we'll go through the basics and hopefully that will make choosing solar for your van, for your next van or your current van a little bit more understandable. So behind me I've got the pop top um, medium wheelbase. Being the pop top roof has got a very flush, very slim um, what we call a semi-flexible panel. Now I've got a semi-flexible panel here to show you and uh, just as a guide you can see why we call it semi-flexible because it really is wafer thin it's probably about four mil thick um, three to four mil and it is very flexible. Now the beauty of that is you know you don't get any wind noise you don't get any wind resistance so it's super flush on the roof and it works tremendously and because it's a pop top roof you can get an enormous panel up there now if we lived in spain and it was like this every day 100 watts of solar would be sufficient that'd be great you wouldn't need to go big a thing with solar is bigger is better because it's not always like this and as soon as that um, sun goes behind the cloud i can show you what this one's performing on this uh, van let me get my app up and uh, just to show you the difference when the sun's out and it's really sunny and the sun's hitting it, then it will be putting a lot of charging. At the minute, because it's flat and the, the direction of the vehicle makes a massive difference as well. So when you're parked up, at the minute, the roof's flat. So it, although it's getting a charge, it's putting 10 watts of solar in, uh, half an amp it's putting in. But if I angled that slightly up, you would see that jump up to five, six amps. It really does make that much difference. So uh, when the sun's directly above it, it works well. But when the angle's pointing towards it, it works absolutely amazing. They do work a little bit off UV, but it is direct sun. So when that goes behind the cloud, you will notice straight away that will drop down. The wattage it's putting in will drop down. So when you park in your van, a really good tip is, have a look where the sun comes across, the arc of the sun, and um, if you can, it's not always possible, if you can, think about that. If you're dependent on that solar and you're wanting to make the most out of your solar panel, position your van in a position where when you've got the roof tilted up facing the sun, it will get it most of the day, which is, you know, that's where you're going to get the most benefit out of your van. Now, it's not always possible to do, like I say. The worst thing you can do is obviously, this has got a reverse roof up. If I pop this roof now, I'm gonna be away from the sun. It's gonna get a bit of you know, UV light, obviously, but it's not gonna get the benefit of facing the sun. The other option is, and we have done these on pop tops as well, so it depends how you want to go. We've done one recently. This is called a rigid panel, and it has an aluminum frame around it. Really strong, really uh, rigid, as the name suggests. Now, there's a couple of advantages with a rigid panel. Is one is they can often be repaired if they fail, and uh, they have a little resistor inside, and you can get to that resistor and you can cut that out, and usually that will get you some more prolonged life out of your solar panel. With a flexi panel, you can't do that because it's a sealed unit. Once you die, that's it. They're, uh, you have to take them off and replace them. But like I say, the rigid is sometimes repairable. So. Um, and like I say, on this one, we have put one on a pop top recently and we put a roof vent on there. And because he got the dome of a roof vent on his pop top, he said, why not have the solar and have a, a stronger solar? And nowadays the solar panel technology is amazing. They've got two way solar on the rigid now. So you've got top and bottom. So it, it picks up rays from what's reflected off the roof as well, which is incredible. So solar technology is moving on so fast and the panels are changing month by month we see a massive difference in uh, in solar now the controllers that's a big important thing as well so there's a few different controllers i've, I've picked up three out of the, uh, the unit this is one we've taken out of the van when we've upgraded somebody's solar we don't fit things like this but this is a basic solar controller it's a P, uh, pv controller and it, it tells you what's going in it's got the um, it gives you a solar input battery input and a, a load you can take a load off so you can power something using the solar directly uh, some of them have dual battery controllers as well which are quite a good idea because you can then uh, run a cable to your engine battery and you can 
or you know you can put a little bit of charge into your engine battery over winter months or if you're not driving for more than six weeks at a time modern vans don't last very long so uh, on their engine batteries so that puts another charge to the van as well there's also another little device what we install called a battery mate that works well uh, the next option is well uh, sorry as we're going on to that one um, the next one up from that you can get an mptt controller i think that's what it i always get that mixed up but uh, and that's a better quality controller and it puts more current it uses more of your uh, wattage what you create and it converts it better puts it in your it's just a better controller and it gives you more charge that way so you can upgrade your charger to a better quality one uh, another option is combined chargers so this is a DC to DC charger, quite reasonably priced this one to be honest, it's more lower end of the market and it does your engine charging but it also has a cable for solar. So on there you've got a solar input, so that will do up to 20 amp solar input. So you can use a combined charger which some people do. Now we use a Victron product, so we use, because we like the app, and Victron is the world leaders in, uh, in motor home and, and solar technology and battery charging. So it's a very good product. Uh, I think we have a five year warranty on. So they're very, like I say, they're, they're quite expensive, more high end of the market, but they are very good quality as well. Uh, so we use a Victron charger and that goes inside next to your battery and connects to your battery. But like I say, the beauty of our charger or the Victron charger, what we use, is it gives you the information you need to see your battery you can just log on to your app and you can see at any time what your battery is putting in there's a nice app like i say and there's such a difference you can just get that information straight away like i say it gives you all that information and it'll tell you if it's charging you know, or if it's in float mode it's this one's in absorption so it means it's taking the charge and it's putting it into the battery when it's had enough and the batteries are full it will just go into float and then it'll just it's, it's standby really so it just goes into standby it doesn't do anything with the charge until you put a, a need or a drain on that battery and then it will start working again so it's self regulating looks after itself there's no need to worry about it you can check on it you can see what it's doing but it sorts itself out which is the best way so um like i say a couple of panels i think that's uh, the rigid one over there is a 150 to give you an idea of size the one next to it's a 170 180 uh, we've started putting on the 270 austrian panels now make as well manufacture is a big important thing you can get cheap affordable panels chinese ones but if it's a if it's a flexible panel you have to bond those panels on and if it's a cheap chinese panel sometimes they fail after a couple of years we've had a batch what failed after two years and we stopped using them because it's such a big job to get that panel replaced then it's not worth it two years is not enough so we do a minimum of five years on the flexible panel now and the rigid panels you can get up to 10 years on them so you know they're much you know because they are more reliable i guess and you get air circulation around it so if you've got a, a, a high top van i would go rigid if you've got a pop top van i would go semi-flexible and like i say bigger is better 100 will work fine in this weather but you've got to come uh, got to um consider over winter the sun is so much weaker it's virtually you know half the strength it is now if not worse so it you know the bigger the panel the, the more juice you're going to put into your battery over winter periods i hope this helps and drop me a message ask me some questions if you need any further information on that mm -hmm.